it's your hostess with the mostest and you're watching red lips red wine real talk and i'm your host infinite and tonight i have a very special segment for you guys and we have a special guest for you guys antonio the actor don't he look like idris y'all yes Come on, <laughs> clink clink already and so we got a special segment for you guys. We're going to be interviewing Mr. Antonio. We're going to learn all about his experiences, his challenges, and what he's doing now and coming forward. So get your wine glasses, get your bottle of sweet red wine, pull up and pour up because Red Lips, Red Wine, Real Talk starts now. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for coming to Red Lips, Red Wine, Real Talk. I'm extremely grateful. This is our second interview. Indeed, indeed. Thanks for having me. It's of an course, honor to be here. It's an honor to be here. I'm honored to have you on the show, man. <laughs> for real. Your energy is absolutely amazing. Vice versa. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you so much. So we're going to get into the first part of the show. Okay. Where I do the interview. And then I got a couple of questions for you for part two. All right, nice. So let's get started. Let's go. Question number one. When did you start your career in the film industry? Well, I said about 10 years ago, I was uh, hit up by Shy Lady Harold. Mm. She's a local artist in the DMV uh, from Baltimore, Maryland. She did shows all up and down the East Coast, mixtapes, albums, things nice. of that nature. And she would hit me up to do videos. Okay. All in town with different artists and things of that nature. And from that, I met other artists. And so I say about 2010, 2009, that kicked off. Yes. And from then on, um, it was just something to do. I always was a fan of entertainment, so it it was I liked the originality and the create creativity that was involved in that. And I always took it serious. You know, get there on time. Anything I do I take it serious. Yes. So that led to a production by Arthur Stacy Stacey Fenner. Arthur Stacy Fenner, who I was introduced by Shy Lady Harold ten years later. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So your connection in the beginning led you to the connection that you're using right now. Yes. That's amazing, honestly, Indeed. it is. Because yeah. you're definitely a dope actor. Thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. So what inspired you to become an actor? Uh, as a kid, you know, I'm my only child. Okay. So movies were my escape. You know, as a, as a kid, you can't relate to your parents for real. And, you know, mostly all my friends had brothers and sisters. So... No one was really in my world, you know what I mean? Other, other, I guess, uh, kids who didn't have brothers and sisters lived in their own head. So we necessarily may not have connected because they lived in their world, I lived in my world, and I had my experiences. So TV was my escape. Television was my escape. I mean, I remember watching, like, the Smurfs and pretending I was in a village, you know. Oh, for real? And it kept me yeah, excited, me. yeah. And then, you know, as I, you know, got, you know, preteen, you know, I was watching, like, Scarface and... You know, I was watching all types of movies and I I had a passion for how did they do that? How did he become that angry? You know, how you know, I was excited about the world that I was watching. So from that, uh, it just propelled me to have a respect for the craft. Yes. Of entertainment, yeah. I know that's right. That sounds really good. Because as a kid, that's when it's really imperative to imagine and do right. all of that type of stuff because one of the secrets to Becoming what you want to be is you have to visualize it. Exactly. So that prepared you for what you're doing right now, that visualization. It did. It really, it, did, yeah, it, did. It, it really pays to use your imagination. Yes, yes. And it's not cliche. You got to fake it till you make it. No question. Period. No okay. Who is your favorite actor? I have several. Um, okay. Michael Douglas, Denzel Washington, Samuel Jackson. Big fan of Omar Epps. Big, big fan of Omar Epps. Omar Epps, to me, uh, to me, he should be given much, much more credit. Uh, what I seen from him in Higher Learning blew me. Uh, the way he broke down when Tyra Banks was shot. Uh, to me, that was a power performance. I haven't seen anybody top that, to me. Uh, so he's a very dope actor. You know, I see him play everything from a gangbanger to an African on a ship. I can't remember the movie, but it came out in the mid '90s. So, have you seen *Fatal Affair*? Yes, I have. Yes, yes, yes. So, tell me about that. How? What was your perspective of the movie? First of all, did you like it? I like. I, I love seeing 
both my Epson and me and Long were on the film, on the screen together. Okay. That that was just classic to me. Okay. Regardless, regardless of what it is, even if it's a voiceover, okay. I just love I just love them too. Mm -hmm. You know, they come from the era of uh, the '90s when we were popping. Yeah. Like, oh man, it's like, it, and it was only a selected few, but they held it down. They sure did. And to me, they paved the way for what's going on now. Absolutely. Um, Certainly. the movie so much was was okay. You know, uh, I wouldn't say it was the greatest. But I would say that they pulled it off being who they were. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They brought that classic performance back. You know, I can agree. and I agree. I mean, I uh, got me saying. Oh, <laughs> I enjoy seeing them on film together. So I enjoyed that that part. You know, to me, the movie was pretty much um, uh, uh, what's the word? I can see it coming. It was it was predictable. It was very predictable. Okay. But it was great seeing him play somebody different. It was great seeing her play a victim that became the victor, and yeah. I was like, that part of it is what I picked up from. I like the way you yeah. said that, the victim that became the victim. Yeah, yes. indeed. Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's incredible, you know what yeah. I'm saying? He's an awesome actor. Awesome. He is. I love him in, uh, what is it, Love and Basketball? Oh, no question. But Sinai Lathan. Sinai Lathan, oh yeah. He played a couple of good movies. Right. Um. What about Makai Fife? How do you feel about him? Oh, that's my dog. Uh, I, I like him in Clockers. Loved him in um, Paid in Full. Man, how he broke down in that car. Um, from, uh, what's the brother name that he acted with? Uh, Wood. Um, um, what's his name? He played in, in The Wire. He played in Above I don't know his name, but I think I know what you're talking about. That brother, uh, I, I wish I, my mind was going blank because he's a. Uh, Wood Harris. Wood, Wood Harris is a, a phenomenal actor out of uh, Chicago. And he had said in an interview that Makai Pfeiffer, they had to do that scene twice. And he did it the same exact way both yes. times, both down with the tears and all that. That's and fucking skill. What he said was he reflected off his son, his son being uh, in that situation. And you know they from New York, they out there. You know he from New York, so you know he. I don't know if he's from Harlem, but I know he's from New York. Right. And so paid and forward was big to him. Yes. You know? It was it was very heartfelt. So for him to do that role like that, I'm like, yeah, no, that's acting. That you is know. acting. He did yeah. that shit. He killed that. Indeed, he did. I gotta give it up. Separate. How about uninvited guests? Have you ever seen uninvited that? guests? Who, who, what was I seen? Makai Fife. Makai Fife. Oh yeah, that was fun. That I was trying <laughs> off that movie. He did. He did his thing. He did his thing. What I like about Makai Fife, his body language is awesome. He knows how to portray the mood without talking. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some some actors, every actor don't have that. But his face, I mean, I'm like, yo, this dude, grimy. <laughs> yo, that's amazing. You yeah. gotta see that. The body yeah. language, yeah. that's something that I, as an actress, that I like about him. Yeah. That's something that I uh, learned to do. Uh, when I just learned, I, did, I think yeah. I did an um, acting class, and they always said that when you're acting, you must show it with your body. Yes. And, yes. you know, be, embody the character. Right. So when, yeah. you, when you act, you know, you can tell a good actress, an actor, right. because they literally become the whole entire thing. And it the is. ones that are not so good, they're very stiff, they sound right. so robotic. And yeah. so um, he is definitely awesome when it comes down to body language. I need a lot For to sure. Do. Most definitely. And being in New York with that heavy accent yeah. to playing, you know, just the ordinary mode from who knows where, he does it well. You know what I mean? Yes. So you know, salute to all those actors, they're very inspiring. Thank you. Yes, paper way. Indeed. So what's your favorite? I was gonna say, what's your favorite scary movie? <laughs> what's your favorite movie? <laughs> favorite movie? Yeah. I have several. Um, I'm gonna say, I, I, I'm saying Scarface on several interviews. I wanna, I wanna say another one. Uh, Dead Presidents with uh, Lorenz Tate. Oh sure. Yeah. Tate, powerful, powerful yeah. actor. Um, I love Lorenz. When he went from old dog to uh, this cat and did, I mean he did Frankie Lyman and all that yeah, other things. I love I mean, him. He, he, he like a horn player. He can swing. He can do it all. To see him in Dead Presidents as this little kid who, who's uh, who's uh, what's the brother before? He's timid and scared and, and shook and underway. He's green. And then he come out of the war straight predator. That's I mean he gone. And then he got to deal with the real world. And any real man can relate to that. I you know, know what I'm saying? Funny. And watching that, I just related to that character. You know, I was 17 years old watching that movie. And I'm really? like, yo, this dude it was amazing. And to this day, I probably watch that movie at least once a year. What? At least once a year. 
Yeah. I know that's right. It's, it'd be like that's when you know a movie good. Yeah. I yeah. watch at least once a year. Just to see the transition. Because it's lessons in that. Right. Because it wasn't nothing about that movie was fair. It's just life. And Here. to see this transition from these innocent kids go to adulthood just by signing up for war. Yeah. And they're coming back to the real world. I mean, these dudes had all kinds of issues with them afterwards, you know, from being blown up to drugs. PTSD. PTSD to, exactly. Uh uh, disconnected with your loved ones and you got children and, and you know you got to make it in the world and you sleeping with this cat while you was yeah, gone and, 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 I mean, and you know and you got to make money and you broke and so you know these cats like yo we got to get it by any means and they go get it and it's a price to pay Absolutely. phenomenal acting so let's go into the next question yeah. what challenges have you faced in the film industry as so far have you faced any is the question yeah plenty um okay Showing up on set uh, with uh, individuals who don't take it as professional as you do. Um, so when you're around that, you know, you take it dead serious because you're here and that's what you're about. Right. Some people is just a thing. Mm -hmm. And so they bring all types of attitudes and chaos to it. So I separate myself from that. Okay. The other challenge is I still have a nine to five. I'm still daddy, father, four. That's you right. know what I mean? And right. I have my obligations. So that don't, acting doesn't come before my obligations, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I have to take care of them, um, by any means. So, I take care of them, I make sure they good, I work my 16 hour shift, and then I gotta film that day. And I'm, I'm a man of no excuses, so that's a challenge showing up on set, and I may have to give that energy to this character, dead tired. And so to me, that propels me forward because as I do it and keep doing it, I get stronger as an actor. That's incredible. Yeah. So, what what did you learn from some of them challenges that you faced? Like, what was your lesson? Oh, okay, that I can do it. Yeah, you know, you because go. you don't know what you're capable of until you, you do it. That and right. so I'm like, man, I'm tired, I'm beat up, I don't even feel like it. <laughs> but I gotta go perform, and we might be there six hours shooting mm -hmm. one scene Thanks. because they want it right. Thanks. You got an acting coach on set. Um, no, he's not angry there. He's angry here, but then he starts to mellow out here. You gotta change up the whole disposition yeah, and dive into that character. And so, you know, I respect I respect acting. I respect it. So when I come on set, regardless how I feel, I respect what I'm there for. That's right. So first and foremost, coming in the door with that attitude, I accomplish anything because I got the respect for it. So I'm gonna give it my best. I'm gonna honor it while I'm there. I'm gonna honor the director, I'm gonna honor the other actors, and I'm gonna do my part. That's what I'm talking about. And so yeah, so it, it just basically showed me like, brother, you can do this. I know that's right. Yeah. That makes me feel good to hear that. You take it serious. You know what I'm saying? You are not a god for excuses. You are a a dad and you are an actor and you have a nine to five and you show up with no excuses, no question, and you give that energy that you need to give even when you don't feel at your best because you right. dream. You make that shit happen. And that is what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> gotta be passionate about what you do. You gotta eat, sleep, and breathe this right. every day. Because exactly. you have to be consistent, period. That is what you call consistency. Right. Exactly. So let's move to the next question. I would like to know what actor or actress do you look forward to? Because I'm going to say do you look forward to, not, you know, yeah, yeah. any other way. Because you will work with them. Who Indeed. are you going to work with? We'll see that. <laughs> like, who do you want to work with? But who are you going to work with? Well, I would definitely love to work with the vets. You know, okay. Samuel Jackson, Denzel, and yes. people of that nature. I would love to work with the Makai Pfeiffer and, and um, let's see, uh, Omar Epps. But... Like the new breed, the dude that played in Snowfall. Um, I can't think of his character, but he's the head dude. This yeah. brother is going to come up. He's serious. Yes. I love his acting skills. I believe it's a lot to learn. My bad. Huh? Sorry about that. I didn't, it, it, he popped right in my head when you said it. Yeah. He talking about the guy from Black Mirror. I know exactly. I know you talking. That's my, that's I, love, my whoa, that dude. I can see you working with him in Thank real life. I can't see that shit. I feel good about you. you. That's, that's <laughs> another, another challenge that I don't get time really to prep into a character. Really? I kind of got to get it. I got to get it like that because everything microwave. Hey. Okay, you shoot next Friday. Here go your script today. Yo, that's it's some real Tuesday. shit that you just said. Yeah. This guy just said that he gave me a perfect topic to talk about. He said, let's talk about people who want to uh, microwave with money but don't want to do the work. You want the right. money to come now but right. you're not willing to prep and prepare and work and 
grind and do yeah. what it takes to become this. Right. But, but you just want to hand it to you because everything is so on demand now. Exactly. That shit is crazy. Right. So, the next question is, yeah. what is coming up on the horizons? Where are you headed next? More movies, more model contracts, yeah. more voiceovers. I have a lot of, well, first of all, favorite one, uh, LLC, is my management team. Mm. And phenomenal management team. And I'm affiliated also with Ahava Haru. Uh, well, I'm going to say Ahava Productions. Uh, it's a way to pronounce it that I keep messing up. Uh, sorry, Tina. I'm going to say Ahava Productions, all right? Ahava Productions. <laughs> I'm also affiliated with uh, Silk White of Good to Go Films yes. and Nyan Freeman of um, Iron Crown Productions. With that affiliation, I have a lot of films and connections with uh, some other independent companies and some mainstream uh, networks and there's some great possibilities. So uh, much more to come with that. And as far as the modeling thing going, um, I have a lot of people that's interested in me through my management team that I haven't met yet, um, so I'm looking forward to meeting those individuals. I just landed a um, yearly or well, annual contract with uh, Endless Cleaning and Restoration, which is a cleaning company out of Chicago, and I just got the voiceover for a social media ad. Uh, thanks to Favor One for blessing me with that connection. And so it's a lot, a lot of things coming on, going on with these production companies that I'm involved in that I just spoke of. The others I can't speak on because of uh, of the connections and the things that, that may happen from it. But another shout out to Arthur Stacey Fender for Commandments of a Female Hustler that we're uh, we are shooting now and is going to be marketed to uh, many networks. So yes. that could be very, very, very big. But if you don't know who Arthur Stacey Fender is, you can amazing. Google her, check out her books. She is an amazing, amazing Absolutely. woman, author, director, and uh, just dear to my heart. So I, 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 I'm i blessed to be working Definitely with her. Shout out to Stacey. Indeed. For certain. Okay, so let's see. How can the viewers view your movies? Well, honestly, uh, which, which is dope, I just had an independent film that I did when I first started on Amazon Prime called I Knew Better by Silk White. And it was uh, a phenomenal experience. Um, I got that script maybe a week before they filmed. And Silk White, good brother, shout out to Silk White, great brother right there. He hit me up and said, brother, I need you. I said, I got this part for you, I need you handle it. So I don't know what happened with the previous uh, actor or what have you, but I know I got the part. And I did my thing. Yes. You know, I did my thing. Within that week, and the reason I say that is because I only had a short amount of time to dive into this character. So I had to get into some deep roots. I had to go into some personal experiences. And then I had to go into some other characters that I've seen in life on TV to develop this character, Apollo. And in doing so, it was like a hit. I had a lot of people give me some great reviews on this character, Apollo. So I knew better on Amazon Prime. It is also on Good to Go Films, which is good. The number two, gofilms.com. I'm involved with a film called Black Therapy uh, that's getting shot now. I did a horror movie, an urban yeah. classic horror movie called No Trespassing. That's on goodtogofilms.com. And uh, a few others that are still in production that are getting marketed to networks. So right now it's goodtogofilms.com. I'm in a web series, uh, Till Death Do Us Part by Silk White on YouTube. Uh, second season, Till Death Do Us Part, Officer Ralph, Mr. Glazed Donut. It's a story with that. Mm -hmm. Mr. Glazed Donut, yes. check him out, check him out, he a wild boy. Man, I know that's right. <laughs> Honestly, you really are an incredible actor. Like, thank I've you. actually checked out a couple of your things. Like, yo, you literally be the character for Thank you, show. thank you. And I be studying niggas. I be like, let me see if he's going to stick the character. Right. He's going to break. No, this man stays the fucking character. Like, you start to wonder, like, do I know him? Like, the fucking, like, what? Yes, like, that's that's an amazing skill to be able to do that. Not really character and stick to your fucking character, bro, because people can't do that. And coming from you, D, uh, I really and appreciate it. And I mean it, guys. We're going to leave some links below where you can check him out on the different networks that he already said that he was going to be on. Awesome. So go ahead and tell me where they can find you at on your social medias. Okay, so my IG, uh, Antonio I. Simpkins. That's A-N-T-O-N-I-O, -O, the letter I, Simpkins, S-I-M-P-K-I-N-S. I have a website, uh, www.AntonioUrbanSimpkins.com. 
Antonio, like I spelled it, Urban, I-R-B-I-N, and my last name, Simpkins. You can find me on Favor One, um, on Facebook, Favor Favor, also on Facebook, on IG, Favor One LLC, and you can also email Favor One LLC at gmail.com to reach me and uh, book me for any type of uh, productions or hosting events. I host as well. Yeah, so ooh, I got a lot going on. That. Voiceovers, violence, and I'm open. So, you know, you present the opportunity and we'll talk business. Period. You heard the man. So go <laughs> ahead and check him out. So, we're going to have another question for this part of the segment. And it is, if you could step into my shoes, what would you have asked yourself that I did? Wow. That is a very, very good question. Tell me. Okay, um, I'm going to say something that, honestly, I don't even know how I would answer this. Because, you know, nowadays you have to be politically correct. You don't want to offend anybody. So, I'm going to say this. Uh, I would ask, how do you feel about how the world is portraying the male in today's world? When I say that, I'm talking about, like, our clothes, our dress, our mannerisms. Are they trying to push things on us? Because I remember in the 90s, I could find some loose fitted jeans, baggy at the bottom, fit my waist, and it'd be comfortable. Now, every time I go to the store, everything hugging my legs, hugging hugging my, you know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. it, it, it's like ridiculous. Like, I can't find loose jeans. Everything is extra tight. You know, everything is like breaking down. Uh, like, I'm going to say the old school man. The old school man. And I don't knock any uh, body's lifestyle. That's not what I'm about. I'm dead serious on that. But what I am saying is, what about the rest of us that just want to be us? And I feel like society is getting away from that. And it's pushing objectives. So, you know, I just feel like... That's one question I would ask, and I want to answer it because mm -hmm. it bothers me that I can't go to the store and get something comfortable for myself. <laughs> for real. That's all. I mean, that's it. That's the bottom line. Like, I want to be comfortable. I don't want everything tight. You know what I mean? And I feel like our uh, society is pushing things on us to be a certain way. And I know the game. The game is to control. You know, that's, that's the bottom line. You control with television. You control with social media. You control with music. So I get it. But I'm like, don't leave the, the other brothers out, you know? I just want some pants. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to the next part of the show. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, you know? And you just tell me how you really feel about it. Get, go into explanation how you feel like you need to. Bring it on. <coughs> One more thing, real quick. I know she the host, but you no, got to check like, out her book. Yes! Guilty Pleasure. Real look. I read the book. I read the book. Yeah. <laughs> it did something to me. <laughs> it's for, let me tell you, any and everybody, go grab Infinite Guilty Pleasure. Thank you. Please, book one, book two coming. Yes. Grab that. You are I'm vouching. You know what I'm saying? I'm putting my name on it. I don't play that. Antonio Irvin Simpkins is vouching for Infinite Guilty Pleasure. Uh, Read that book. Thank you so much. I feel so good, y'all. You heard what he said. Go to www.amazon.com, type in Infinite Guilty Pleasure, the paperback in the ebook, all the book coming soon, so stay tuned. Amazing book. Thank Bye. you so much. I just had to do that. And I'm grateful and I appreciate it. You got that, boy. <laughs> For real. So, here we go. <clears throat> all right, so are you sending your kids to school this fall, considering the fact that there's no cure for the virus? And before you answer the question, let me give you a fact. More than 97,000 kids, children, <clears throat> have reportedly tested positive for C-19 in a two-week time frame as schools prepare to reopen. Okay, well, first of all, um, well, the answer is no. Uh, uh, the, the schools that my kids are going to uh, aren't opening right away, number one. Number two, they have phenomenal mothers. What I mean by that is my son's mother is actually stopping her income and not working her second job to school our children. Wow. And that's a blessing in that's itself. Amazing. Camille Sam, uh, I appreciate you. Thank you. Our boys are going to benefit from that. Um, my daughter's mother, Makiba 
uh, Hori, and her married name is Makiba Clark. Another amazing woman that's doing so much for her children. And um, so right now, you know, I can honestly say that their mother got that. Like straight up, their mother's got that. And I'm just honored and I'm appreciative for them. And it allows me to go out here and earn in a way that I can spend time with my children, be there for them, as well as be productive and taking us to the next level. Because that, you know, my son's mother is taking that sacrifice and doing that for our children. So I'm very thankful for that. Yo, that's lit. I'm, that's what's up. I love this answer. Y'all, he got the perfect answer to everything. <laughs> y'all, y'all gotta love him for real. All right, so next question. Have you ever been in an entanglement with someone who wanted <clears throat> more from you than you were willing to give? If so, how did that situation, situation ship end? All the time. Um, <laughs> I can say this. I, 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 I've, had, I've had it on both sides. All right, now here, I'm gonna talk. Now, with it happening to, to me, it was very calm. The flip side happened to me once. Okay, so with um, the entanglement, I'm always straight up first. I don't like leading people on. I don't like, I'm not into hurting anybody. I'm very straight up. So I lay all my cards on the table in the beginning. We all know that it means nothing once you get to the entanglement. Because once feelings get involved, the person feeling you, they feeling you. You can't turn that off. They texting you, they calling you, how you doing? You getting <laughs> pictures of them. You know what I'm saying? And it is what it is. And I'm grateful for that because I don't take that for granted. You're giving me your time like you really care about me. But I done laid it on the table from the beginning that this is what it is. So now it's like, how do we go back from that? And I've had flaps where the woman may have gotten mad. She may have gotten upset. But we always go back to being good because my initial interest into our entanglement and I stayed true to it. I never engaged more or misled. And so I've even had uh, a beautiful woman, I wish I could say her name but I can't. She said to me, one day she had, you know, kind of leaned into me and then she called back and said, you know what, I can't even get mad at you. She said because from day one, you've been honest with me and she said, uh, you've been sincere since day one, and I appreciate that. And it was something else she said. She said, she said, you don't deserve that. That was big to me. The woman said, I didn't deserve that because of the man that I was uh, initially and how I've been throughout our entanglement. Now, the whole time I've been trying to get, in the way, I get away from entanglements, <laughs> but I won't sure change myself. It is what it is. I keep it 100. So I can honestly say that all my entanglements that I've been in, have always been understood and, and there's never been any drama from it. Now, the time that it happened to me, alright? Okay. Now, she was a shorty out in DC. And I was feeling her. And, and, and we was good. We was good. <laughs> she was she was very Afrocentric. She was very much into where she was from. She was Bohemian. Um she was into her parents, she had two parents, and she was just well put together. Now what happened was, this one was Christian, I was not. And she like, I need a man that can lead me in Christ. And I'm gonna tell you, I was silent for like five minutes, we about to go to the movies. I was just like, oh, I'm not gonna change who I am. Not say I don't believe in Christ, I'm, I'm a more spiritual person, but I'm not Christian. I don't like any religion, I'm limitless. I believe in Oh, you know what I mean? So, you know, it got kind of hostile because she was like, I need a man to lead me. You know, and she just said it with so much passion. And I felt it. I was like, damn, that ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, as a man, I respected how she felt. And we I'm still friends to this day, but we dated for about maybe a year and a half, two years. And um, we had a phenomenal time. It was dope. But, you know, I let that go. But it was just being on the flip side of that because that normally didn't happen with me. Normally, I didn't like a person more than they liked me. And in this situation, I think I liked her a little bit more than she liked me. You know what I mean? And I think she just had these values that I don't care how you make me feel. I don't care how good you look. I don't care about none of that. These is my, this is what I want. And I'm not going to sacrifice that for you. And it was straight like that. And I'm just like, 
Alright? <laughs> so it was cool. It was cool. So that was the flip side of that. But um, like I said, that was my you know experiences with the entanglements. Okay. You know? Yeah, yeah. I like that. That was good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is my last and final question. All right. So, how do you allow for your spouse, your significant other, to have friends of the opposite sex? If not, why? Let me take a sip of this real quick. Hey, you gonna answer this question? Cause this is good. I know y'all like, hmm, what are you gonna say? What are you gonna say? What are you gonna say? Alright, so boom, check this out. First of all, I don't allow anything because she's her own being. That's right. Yes. So me allowing stuff is out of the question. No, it's not what I allow. I only can control with what I do. I can't control what another person does. You understand? So I go into any relationship open like that. Alright, so as far as a woman, my woman, having male friends, I don't have a problem with it. Why would I? confident in who I am and I want her to love life. I don't want her to meet me and say, well now I can't talk to males. That makes no sense to me. So you're gonna you're gonna demolish uh, uh, <laughs> her 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 way of living just because she with you. You're limiting your wife or your lady or your friend. I don't believe in limiting anybody. I'm more or less like, you know, enjoy life in a way that is productive and beneficial to yourself and that complements us. So if we're together and you're having a positive conversation, enjoy yourself. You know what I mean? What you do with your own time is yours. You know what I'm saying? I don't own you. You don't belong right. you don't belong to me in a way where I got a collar around your neck, you understand? I respect the woman, especially the black woman, because that's what I'm dating right now, a black queen. So her male friends that came before me, her male friends that she meet after me, good for her. You know, you should meet friends and enjoy life. At the same time, I am into an You know what I'm saying? So I don't want people to get misconstrued when I say meet friends. I meant friends, not friends. friends. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> True, genuine friends. Platonic. Platonic friends. Yeah, no doubt. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm open. You know what I mean? And that doesn't, to me, it doesn't challenge my manhood or who I am or where we stand. My thing is, baby, enjoy yourself. You understand? Yes. Yeah. I know so, that's right. That don't bother me, baby. That don't bother me. I love it. That is amazing. This interview has been incredible from the beginning to the middle to the very end. And I'm extremely <laughs> thankful. <clears throat> I'm grateful and I really appreciate you taking the time out to come to Red Lips for it while we talk. Thank you, thank you. This was awesome, guys. I got finished. So, already. Yes, you did. Red Lips. Yes. You see how he did that, champ? So with that being said, I want you to go ahead one more time and just tell the people where they can find you. Okay. Let them know your social medias. And also, guys, I will have all of the links in the description down below. So you can go ahead and click the links and follow him. And then you have a pocket just like that. So go ahead. Right, no doubt. Okay. Well, first of all, shout out to Miss Sheila Powell on the shirt. Royalty King, Royalty Queen, that's what she do. And um you know, she hit me up in the inbox and said, this is what I got going on. She's been supporting me for a long time. And she showed me the shirts and I said, yeah, hey, I'm going to definitely cop a couple. So I cop one for me, my friend, and my daughter. They didn't say queen, of course. They I mean, they pink. They hot yes. pink. But Sheila Powell on, on Facebook. And I'm quite sure I'll take a picture and put the links on my FB and on my IG and things of that nature. Okay, so um, as far as uh, to the way to contact me on social media platforms. My IG is Antonio I Simpkins, which is Antonio, the letter I Simpkins, S-I-M-P-K-I-N-S. You can also follow me at uh, www.AntonioIrvinSimpkins.com. My middle name, I-R-B-I-N. I, I spell Antonio Simpkins for you already. So AntonioIrvinSimpkins.com. You can reach me on Facebook uh, through my management team, Favor One LLC. Uh, favor Favor on Facebook or IG Favor LLC and you can reach them by email at favorllc at gmail.com my movies are on goodtogofilms.com that's good the number two gofilms.com which are no trespassing and I knew better two of the first independent films that I ever completed yeah. you know what I'm saying so you get to see my raw talent from the beginning and definitely catch me on Red Lips with the one and only Infinite. Really? And check out that book, Infinite yes. Guilty Pleasure. I'm look, 
I'm look, I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> the book is fire. You heard what he said. <laughs> it had me at look for the adults, for the adults, for the mature crowd. Yes. It had me at work adjusting myself. You feel <laughs> I had to fix my belt. You know, I wear a Very uniform. Uncensored. I work in a site for the criminal insane on the East Coast, right? I had to adjust myself constantly <laughs> reading that book. I had to put the book down. Like, you know, I read this when I get home. <laughs> yes! It's an uncensored show. An uncensored show, uncensored book. And it is for mature audiences only. And that's it for Red Lips, Red Wine, Real Talk. And I'm your house, Infinite. And uh, Antonio Simpkins. And we're out. Peace.